Uh, hello everyone, uh, this is the uh, recitation for assignment 3. Uh, I'm gonna go through a, a brief explanation of the homework and then uh, answer your questions if you have any. Uh, so I assume the first two parts uh, is straightforward and most of you have gone through the uh, process of solving these two questions. Uh, but I'm going to talk a few minutes about uh, some of the things that came to my attention that might, uh, might confuse some of you. Uh, the first thing is that uh, you should consider A is shift zero, uh, and so B is shift one, and so on. Um, another thing here uh, is that you need to be careful about the direction of your shift. For example, a shift of 3, which is represented by D, means that an A in the plain text will be shifted to D in the cipher text. Now for the process of decrypting or deciphering, uh, it's going to be done in the reverse, which means uh, uh, you should do 3 shift to the left. Uh, for the submission of this part, uh, you need to uh, consider the format that's given to you and um, represent the letter that uh, shows the number of the shifts. Um, for part two, uh, Professor Dupay has gone through this um, Visioner cipher uh, and gave you uh, an extent explanation. Uh, but what you should simply do uh, is that uh, you you can look for uh, repeated patterns in, in the cipher text uh, and find the distance between the the repeated patterns. Uh, then you can find the factor of each distance uh, and the one that's repeated the most is going to be probably your key size. You can validate your assumption uh, using uh, index of coincidence. Uh, and again for the submission it would be the same as the previous part. The first two parts was somehow warm ups. Uh, the part three, in the part three, uh, so you will have a one byte key. Uh, it's somehow similar to scissor cipher, but instead of shift, uh, Zor is used to do the encryption. Uh, it, Confuse some of you how uh, using Zor uh, for encryption is done. Uh, I'm gonna give you a simple example that's provided here. Uh, imagine you have the plain text wiki. Uh, the eight-bit representation of this is provided here, uh, and uh, here this is your one-byte key that's gonna use to do the encryption and decryption. Uh, having the plain text uh, in 8 bit ASCII uh, and 1 bit key, you do the ZOR, and the final result of the encryption would be something like that. And for the in decryption part, uh, you have exactly what the output here, which you do the ZOR with the key that's provided to you, and the result uh, is the plain text that you have here and here. So it's pretty straightforward what's done for the encryption. Um, the code is given to you. Uh, here is the encrypt function that's used to encrypt each byte of plain text uh, with a key, with a one byte key. Uh, the thing is, uh, the output of this encrypt function might not always be printable. Uh, so a base64 encode function uh, is used uh, to make the result uh, printable. Uh, 
uh, here in this example that's provided to you, you can see the test is the plain text that you have. Uh, in, in this example, the key uh, is 80. Uh, first, the encryption function is done. And as we say, because the output might not be printable, uh, the encode function is used at the end. And the final result is this base64 text. Uh, so for the decryption process, the first thing that you should consider to do is decoding this base64 string uh, so that it gives you uh, the actual cipher. And then having the key in this example, uh, you can uh, decrypt it. And here, because the function was ZOR, uh, the uh, process of encryption and decryption is done with the same function. Uh, uh, when you uh, get the cipher text for this part from greatest scope, the thing that it gives you is exactly the base64 encoded version of cipher text. Uh, so uh, you should consider decoding that uh, to base64 first. That's something that you should consider. Uh, submission of the key uh, for this part, uh, you you should submit a header representation of the key, uh, which starts with zero and something. Uh, I think the example here was uh, clear. Mm. The final part uh, is uh, in general the same as the previous part. Uh, the only difference is that uh, in here, instead of having just uh, one byte of the one byte key, uh, you have longer key, the key length is longer than one. So the first step uh, should be finding the key length. Uh, for finding the key length, um, uh, one of the things that you uh, should be careful about is the first step that we already talked about, uh, which was uh, decoding the cipher text that you get uh, so that it gives you the actual cipher. Uh, then you can uh, look for repeat repeated patterns in this cipher text. In order to do so, you can write your own program uh, to find these patterns for you. Another method that uh, it was provided for you uh, by the undergrad TAs uh, in a really good video was this site, I think, yeah. Uh, you can use this site, uh, which help you to find the repeated uh, patterns. Uh, for all of the four part of the homework, especially for the students, some people are confused, if you go through the process of decryption correctly, then you're going to get a readable English text. This is how you can understand you find the right key. Uh, for the submission of uh, part four, uh, you need to submit the ASCII representation of your key. Yeah, that's pretty uh, questions if any uh, which part are we talking about uh, so that I can answer your question Uh, the B that's written before the uh, 
uh, both text and key, it means byte. It converts strings to byte. Uh, let me know if I answered your question. Because, for example, uh, here, one, two, uh, one is the first byte of your key, two is second byte of your key. Yes, it's typecasting, exactly. Uh, yeah, you you can do that because when you decode uh, the cipher text when it, that you get from Gradescope, decoded with base sixty four, you should try to do br brute force uh, to find the key. It could be any anything like VIG that we said. So the answer was yes. But the first step for you would be finding the key length because here in part four, the key length is not one anymore. Uh, we have a key length uh, longer than one. So in order to start, uh, you should probably consider um, uh, finding the key length and then move forward to do the brute force. Uh, for uh, you mean for finding repeated patterns? Are you talking about finding repeated patterns? How you do that? Yeah, in order to find the key length, you should look for repeated patterns and there are different methods to find repeated patterns like, for example, you can write your own code or if you study undergrad TA, there, they introduced a website, which is this one. I can copy and paste it here. Uh, you can use this one to find repeated patterns of uh, your cipher and each hex value in the cipher is one character. For example, backslash x01 is one character. I think I'm not sure if we have an example here, but no. Here, this, this one is the key that's provided as an example in part three is one character. Yeah, you, yeah, you can do it in hex, but also uh, you can do it in ASCII format or using uh, UTF-8 as your encoding. To the best of my knowledge, it doesn't matter which way you do it. I think you can do it with hex format. I saw some question in Piazza which people discuss doing it in ASCII or UTF-8, but you should be able to do it in hex as well.
Was that clear? Yes, you're right. No problem. So you did the right thing uh, by passing the cipher text uh, from grade scope to the decode function. Yeah, that's exactly uh, what you need to do. But here in this text, it's two characters. Yeah, it's three, but the backslash T. Um, in the J backslash T. The first character is J, the second one is backslash, and the third one is T. And after that, uh, in the string that you sent is backslash X and something, it's a hex character. I'm not sure if I get your question. If I didn't answer your question, could you try rephrasing it? Okay, because this first session, session is going to end in a few minutes. But if you have any questions, feel free to email me or post it on Piazza. There are a lot of people that can answer your question on Piazza. 
Good luck and thank you for your homework.